Hey, St. Joseph's, it's Father John here. It is Wednesday, week four of our social distancing experiments, and of course, Wednesday of Holy Week. And now it's time for the Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to, pre to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen I, say to you. Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, there is a Latin word that every Catholic needs to know. And here it is. It is ex opere operato. Ex opere operato, which means there's a few different kind of translations, but it basically means from the work worked or or by the work worked, or in virtue of the work. Now, this has to do with the holiness of the church and the grace and the effectiveness of the church's sacraments, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, reconciliation, anointing, holy orders, and um, matrimony. That the grace of the church, the holiness of the church, and the grace and holiness of the sacraments is not dependent upon the grace and holiness of the person performing the sacrament, the minister, the priest, or of the recipients. Rather, the grace and the effectiveness of the sacrament is through the work of the sacrament, which is Christ's work. This is huge. This is huge. Because there are many evil people receiving the sacraments. There are many evil people ministering the sacraments. But it doesn't depend upon the recipient or upon the minister. It depends upon the work of Christ. That the grace and effectiveness and holiness of the sacraments and of his church, which is the sacrament of Christ, is based not on its members, but on Christ. This is huge, brothers and sisters. A Christian should never be scandalized by sin, especially, or even if it happens in the very heart of the church, like the Pope or a priest or a cardinal or a bishop or somebody, or the holiness, the holiest lay person you know at the parish, because we do not place our faith in men, women, princes, yada, yada. We place our faith in Jesus Christ. And it is through the power of Jesus Christ and his work that is being, that is working through the sacraments that is, that is what gives the, the sacraments its grace and holiness and gives the church the sacrament of Christ, its holiness. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because we have now the third reading on the betrayal of Judas Iscariot, or on, on Judas Iscariot. Judas is one of the 12 foundation stones, one of the, the, the foundation of the church. At the very core of the church is a sinner, is one of the greatest sinners, the betrayer of Jesus, the betrayer of the Son of God, the betrayer of the God-man himself. And yet God works, continues to work through Judas so that the work of salvation can be done. So that while, Ju while Judas is intending evil, right, that the work of salvation, that God the Father is still allowing God's work of salvation to happen even through the betrayal of Judas, so that the same thing happens, like, even if you had the worst priest ever who was, like, a drunken, lust-filled pedophile, whatever you can think of, that if he makes a valid, if he still does a valid sacrament, it still is a holy sacrament that is giving grace, not because of his holiness 
or the recipients, but because of the holiness of Jesus Christ. Just in the same way that it's that the work of salvation is not attributed to Judas because he's the one who betrayed Jesus, which then leads to Jesus dying, which then leads to our salvation. No, it's the because of the holiness and the work of, of Jesus Christ. And so, my brothers and sisters, we place our trust in Jesus Christ. Not in priests, not in deacons, not in religious, because they are only conduits, they are only channels of God's grace, that God in his brotherly love has brought them to himself so that we can encounter grace in a tangible and incarnational way. We place our faith in Jesus Christ. He is the source of the church, and he is the, and he is the church's holiness. St. Joseph, I love you and praying for you and offering masses for you. God bless you.